Hi, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine, reporting to you from the San Joaquin Valley Grape Symposium, hosted by Allied Grape Growers and the UC Cooperative Extension. Here today, growers gain an update on pest and disease control in the vineyard, and Allison Ferry E.B., a viticulture advisor, discussed how to identify and treat vineyards with glassy wing sharpshooter and Pierce's disease. Pierce's disease uh, is potentially a really big problem. It's vectored by, it's a bacteria, and it's vectored by uh, two different groups of insects, uh, sharpshooters and spittlebugs. And in sharpshooters, there are several native species of sharpshooters, uh, like blue-green sharpshooter, and there is also glassy wing sharpshooter. And glassy wing sharpshooter is the one that we worry about a lot. So not only are they responsible for vine-to-vine -vine spread within a vineyard, but they're responsible for spread amongst vineyards. So it's really important that you set up a monitoring and control program for vectors of this disease. And the other uh, thing that you need to worry about is to set up a monitoring and control program for the disease itself. So what you need to look for when you're surveying and looking for, for Pierce's disease in your own vineyard, there are two sets of symptoms. One is early season symptoms. The, what you'll usually get is when leaves emerge in the springtime, they will be small, chlorotic, growth is going to be delayed. Um, and but but these symptoms can be mixed up with other diseases and other issues. So what we really look for with Pierce's disease are symptoms that you see in uh, late summer, early fall, and that includes leaves that uh, drop prematurely and that have problems um, with chlorosis and necrosis along the leaf margins and edges, uh, slowly going inwards in concentric rings. In white varieties, the chlorotic edge on, on uh, these leaves will be yellow for green varieties, and it'll be red for red grape varieties. So that's one symptom that you need to keep an eye out on. Another symptom are matchstick petioles, which are when the leaves have prematurely dropped off, they leave the petiole. Uh, so we call these either matchsticks or naked petioles. That's a, another very important symptom. And the third symptom that you want to look for are green islands. So when you look on a cane, you may see areas of the cane that have senesced, and, but there are still green islands of tissue that have not yet senesced. So if you see all three of those symptoms together, that's a really good indica indicator that you potentially have Pierce's disease um, and you should send those off for lab testing. So what happens if you actually find a vine that has Pierce's disease? What you really need to do is remove the infected vine. You know, people have a hard time with that. It's, it's a big investment. It's really painful to take out an infected vine, but it's really important to do. It's what we recommend. If you choose to, you can severely cut back a vine. So say if there's only one cane that you see symptoms on, it's really tempting to cut to severely prune that vine. You might think that you could fix the problem by cutting that infected area off. But if you do that, it's only about 30% effective. So in the long run, what we really recommend is that you remove infected vines. And the important thing is just to keep Pierce's disease in mind as part of your regular integrated pest management program. Train your workers um, how to spot the disease, train yourself how to spot the disease, um, and how to identify sharpshooters, uh, keep out sticky cards to monitor them. Um, and you should be good to go as long. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you, Allison. Learn more about this topic in the coming issue of American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.